The 2022 World Cup is just six months out. The 26 guys that will represent the United States in the World Cup are all in the fate of one guy's hands. Oh my god, bro. Oh. Guys, welcome back to the channel. It's the States FC. Sorry for yet another stupid intro. I just got to get back my intro game. It's been a minute, but in today's video, I'm going to be going over which 26 guys I think Greg Berhalter is going to go and bring to Qatar. This is not my personal preference, but this is what I think solely my early prediction on what Greg Berhalter is going to do uh, come the World Cup. And it's going to be divided into three categories. You have green. These guys are locked. There's no debate about it. As long as they're not hurt, they're going to be on this roster. Blue. Is they're pretty close, although there's a possibility they might get replaced, but I'm still willing to put money that these guys will be on the roster. And yellow is this spot is still wide open. There's many guys competing for it, but there still might be a front runner at the moment, but it could very well change. But anyway, we're going to start going position by position. If you have not already, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It helps more people find us, so let's go. All right, so beginning with our goalkeepers first up, I have Zach Seven, and I think this is pretty obvious. He's going to be a lock on this roster. He's been Berhalter's go-to guy. For the past three years ever since he's been in charge so i just think zach stefan even though he's not in the best form right now is definitely easy number one going to qatar and would definitely be a lock on this roster uh second up will be matt turner he is bro alters number two he was also used a lot throughout qualifying after zach seven has some injuries but nonetheless he's a very good keeper that if we need to call up upon an emergency matt turner can do the job so i think both of these guys are locks for qatar in our third goal keeper, I have Ethan Horvath. Now, I think he's pretty close to a lot because I think it's pretty clear. These are Greg Berhalter's three favorite goalkeepers, but I'm not going to call him a lot necessarily. He wasn't really playing World Cup qualifying, getting called up just because, you know, there was no point in flying a guy in all the way from Europe just to not play. So that's why Son Johnson got a majority of those caps. But I still think Ethan Horvath is the third best keeper that we have at the moment. We saw in the Nations League his heroics. Um, I guess there is a case for potentially a Gaga Sonina or a Sean Johnson to maybe sneak into that third spot. But I think these three goalkeepers are pretty straightforward. And, you know, these are their spots for the taking. All right, so moving on to our outside backs. The first two guys are Haber Locks, and they're going to be starters in Qatar as long as they're healthy. And that's Anthony Robinson and Sergino Dest. Both of these guys are very good athletes, very good going forward and attacking. Now, they do have some questions defensively in transition and 1v1 defending. But both these guys are really good through us for World Cup qualifying. Anthony Robinson, in particular, was one of our better players in World Cup qualifying. And his ability to just play three games in 90 minutes over the course of, you know, six days was just crazy working overtime at some of these windows. Next up, I have two guys that I think as long as they don't get hurt or have a fall off in form, they're going to be in this roster. First up is DeAndre Yellen. Him and John Brooks are the only two guys in the mix for this roster that got experience in the 2014 World Cup. So that alone gives me a reason to believe that he's that Burrell is going to bring him on this roster. I think Yellen is a very frisky player, a very aggressive player, and a very quick player. A guy you can bring off the bench to help close out a game. Uh, next up, I have Reggie Ken, a guy who Berhalter's also seem to rate pretty highly. He only played in two World Cup qualifiers, if I'm not mistaken. But he's been playing a lot for Boa Vista as of late as a right center back. And I just think Berhalter really seemed to rate him over the course of the past couple years. And I think he's going to be on this World Cup roster. Now, it could be a Joe Scally or a George Bello. But I just think these are the four most likely guys that Berhalter is going to bring in on this roster. All right, so moving on to our center back pool. The first two guys to have, they're going to be called up. Both of these guys are locks, and Berhalter has seemed to rate over the course of the past year. And both these guys have been pretty good for the national team over the past year. And that's Walker Zimmerman and Miles Robinson. Miles Robinson is very good defending 1v1. Walker Zimmerman is better in the air and better uh, sitting in a low block. But I just think these two guys have been very good under Berhalter the past year and are going to be locks in this roster. My last lock at center back is Chris Richards. He's played... Play some minutes of work qualifying. He was good when he got them. I just think he's very good uh, defensively, very good playing the ball out of the back. I think he's basically a luck. I think Berhalter just throwing a young kid out in some of these woke up qualifiers at a center back position makes me to believe that he's going to be a lock on this roster. And he's spoken pretty highly about Chris Richards before. So I think these three guys are locks. The next two guys I have, I think could go anyway. But I think John Brooks is going to be there and Aaron Long is going to be there. I just think John Brooks is going to get an opportunity in June to show what he can do. He's very good playing the ball out of the back, very comfortable with the ball at his feet. I just think the way that the World Cup qualifying games were played, I just think Burhalter felt that he wasn't going to fit those games because, you know, we were playing with the high line and he was going to get beat over the top, just things like that. I just think John Brooks didn't really fit the way that we played in CONCACAF, but he has experience playing in the World Cup. I think Burhalter's going to bring him for that. He's a guy who can help sit in a low buck or if we have possession, I think he can be a very valuable asset to play the ball out of the back. Now, my last guy, I don't rate in particularly that high. I don't really like Aaron Long, 
But I think Burhalter's willingness to bring him into a roster just so quick makes me to believe that he's going to be on this World Cup qualifying, not World Cup qualifying, World Cup roster, especially with the expanded roster. I think Aaron Long is going to be that last defender. Having five center backs also allows you to have some flexibility to potentially play a three or five in the back if you need to. But these are the five center backs I had to go if I had to guess. Now, I think maybe an Eric Palmer Brown could slide in there, but I just think right now, these five center backs are basically locked up for me. All right, next up at our defensive midfield positions, the six, I have Tyler Adams and Kellen Acosta. Tyler Adams, when he was healthy, was the go-to six for us in World Cup qualifying. He does so many things behind the scenes that a lot of people don't pick up on. Yes, he's not the greatest off with the ball at his feet, but he's very good off the ball, very good in the counter press, one of the hardest working players on the team. Cuts out so many little chances. He just does so many little things, right, that a lot of people don't realize. And then I have Kellen Acosta. I just think Berhalter really seems to rate him. He played him a lot and will qualifying at multiple positions. I just think the versatility and the hard work rate that Kellen Acosta has is going to put him on this World Cup roster and get him a spot on that playing to guitar. All right, moving on to our eights, our guys who are going to be playing in those two spots in front of the six for us in the World Cup. First two guys I have are Weston McKinney and Eunice Musa. As long as these guys are healthy, they're probably going to be starters. Weston McKinney is probably the most important player to this team. When he was healthy and woke up qualifying, he was so good for us. He's just grown so much over the past couple years. He's developing just one of the better eights in the world. Then I have Eunice Musa, a guy who's still really young but has a lot of upside. Very good ball at his feet. Good playing the ball out of the back and he's just so comfortable in possession. And then I have Gio Reyna. Now, it's very possible the Barraza could use him as a winger, but I just think he's going to get an opportunity at some point to play in the midfield. We know he's better centrally, and I think Barraza is going to realize that at some point. So I think Gio Reyna is going to be one of these eights, and he's definitely a lock for sure. Now, if he's not playing in the midfield, then he's probably a starting winger, and that's also a lock. Gio Reyna is one of the most talented players that we have in this entire roster. Now, next up, I have Luka De La Torre. Burhalter towards the end of qualifying really seemed to start rating him. But De La Torre is very good with the ball at his feet, very good in possession. He just makes things go as a very good facilitator of the ball. And I think all four of these guys are locks in this system. Burhalter rates all these guys highly and is very, very willing to put these guys in very high, high importance, high uh, intensity games. So I think these guys are all locks. Like I just don't see any world where these guys don't get into the roster. Now, the last guy I have... I think it's going to be Gianluca Buzio. Berhalter seems to have rate, rated Gianluca Buzio pretty highly in the past, playing him a lot in the Gold Cup. And when he was on these World Cup qualifying rosters, he was playing a lot. If I'm not mistaken, he got two starts. I know he started in Jamaica, and he played all right. Uh, as long as he doesn't hit a huge like divot in form, I think he's going to be on this roster. He still has a very good upside. But I just think these are the five center mids that Berhalter is going to go with in Qatar. All right, first up, I have Christian Pulisic, and he is a lock, and I think we've known that since about 2017. This kid is special, one of the faces of American soccer. This World Cup is really going to be an opportunity for him to show out for this team on the world stage. Hopefully, he's ready for the task. He's done some really good things in the U.S. shirt, was pretty good throughout World Cup qualifying. Um, so, yeah, it's just going to be about how we can get the most out of Christian Pulisic uh, for the next few months to have met his best for the World Cup. Next up, I have Timothy Wea coming into qualifying. He probably wasn't a lot, but just the way he was able to perform with the opportunities that were given to him in World Cup qualifying, he just adds a completely different element to the way that we attack. He's so electric off the ball, very good in the counter press, very good in combination. Uh, Timothy Wea right now is probably even a debater for starter when Gio Reyna is healthy. I just think he was that good throughout World Cup qualifying. So he is a certified lock and has been for quite a while now, and I have Timothy Wea at number two. Next up, I have Brendan Aronson. Had a really blazing hot start to the U.S. in 2021. Uh, started qualifying pretty well. Didn't really necessarily have a bad rest of the qualifying window, but just kind of cooled down a little bit. I think he's basically a lock. I just don't see a Jordan Morris, Matthew Hoppy, a Conrad, an Ariola placing him in the next few months. I just don't think it's going to happen. Aronson is really good in combination, decent in tight spaces. A little bit inconsistent with his playmaking ability, but his main thing is he's just going to run to the ground for 90 minutes if you give him the opportunity. And I think he's a guy you could really, could be really important calling off the bench to help close out a game. My last winger spot, I know this is controversial, but I think it's going to be Jordan Morris. I just think Berhalter rates Jordan Morris a little more highly than Paul Areola. Matthew Hoppy isn't really playing a lot for his club at the moment, and Berhalter is really big about form. Conrad, again, just hasn't had enough opportunities, and I don't think Burhalter is going to call him in anytime soon. So I just think he's going to go with Jordan Morris. I think Jordan Morris, if he's able to get back to the way that he was in 2019 and 2020, I, it might not happen. We don't know, but I think if it's possible, he's, he, 
he can do some good things. He's good in transition. Could be a, a good guy to bring off the bench if we're trying to close out a win. Uh, if we're up by a goal and trying to hit someone on the counter, like Jordan Morris, that's where he's going to thrive in open space in transition. But I just think, based off Beralta's roster patterns, I think the last winger is going to be Jordan Morris, but it could very well change to be a Paul Areola. At striker, now I have no logs as striker. Ricardo Pepe and Ferreira, I think they're both pretty close. I think those are the two guys that Berhalter really seems to connect with and like the most. He played these two guys the most without qualifying, and rightfully so. They have been our two best strikers over the course of the past year. Now, Pepe isn't really doing the best, struggling to adapt to the Bundesliga, and that's understandable. He's still 19, but this kid still has loads of talent. I think right now, if I had to guess, I think he's going to be the starter in Qatar. I think Pepe offers the most really good, has really good hold up play, good off the ball, and when he gets the opportunity, he's going to put them away. He's just rare. I think he's good. I just don't think he really suits the way that we play. I just think we need a nine who can really stretch a back line. I think Pepe just offers more than Ferreira for us in the way that we attack. But Ferreira's still a good player, and I wouldn't mind him getting some minutes off the bench. And I think he's going to make the World Cup roster, but we'll see. My last guy, and this could go so many ways. You have Matthew Hoppe, you have Daryl DK, you have even Hodge Rice came into the picture. Who else? There's just so many names, but I think it's going to go to Josh Sargent. I just think Sargent, the way that we play with our nines, a high pressing nine, a guy who can hold the ball up really good off the ball. I just think Sargent, if he gets an opportunity, I think he's going to show Berhalter that he can really do that. I just don't think you need a Ferreira. I, don't just, I just think the way that we have our striker pool set up right now, we need a variety of strikers. And I think Josh Sargent is a little bit different than all than both Ferreira and Pepe, but he still really fits the way that we play. And if I had to guess, I think these are going to be the three strikers that Berhalter wants to bring to Qatar. All right, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to hit those comments down below. Let me know what you think Greg Berhalter is going to do, who you think is going to be on this World Cup roster that I forgot to mention on this list. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.